The Fiat Fullback is today an auto fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Our full review here with the exterior, interior and the driving experience. We also have a soft off-road part and also city and street driving and some motorway that you know all of the different aspects of this car, which is a sibling of the Mitsubishi L200 as some of you might also see already. You can also check an L200 review to compare it later on. We will also link it in the video description. But this one here now about the Fiat fullback. Wow, in a special black trim here also with all-terrain tires looks pretty spectacular doesn't it more to this car now in full hd full screen and full length let's go Fullback named after an important player position in football or rugby, for example. And as I said, here in the black trim, pretty spectacular. And well, it would also be city suitable as a lifestyle pickup um, that some people do buy, buy that nowadays. But this one would also have off-road features, of course. The front here with a, let's say, friendly face also. The headlights are drawn a little bit more horizontally here. And again, a little resemblance to the L200 from Mitsubishi here with a contrast and here on the lower part. So overall a strong appearance, but not, you see, the most angular strongest as you, for example, know from a Ford Ranger or a Ford F150, for example, because we have this round shape here at the front grille as well. So it sits somewhere in between. It's, it wants to be both off-road and city compatible. 5 meters 30 or 17 foot 3 is the total length of the Fiat Fullback. In Europe, this is really a, let's say, big pickup truck. In US, it would be rather a small or mid sized pickup truck. Contrasting mirror caps here and those beautiful two color scheme alloys, 17 inch with those all terrain tires. I mean, you don't really need them for, um, for street driving, but also with the, you know, with the white letters they look really great with those you know really strong profile then we also got those side steps here and a lot of you guys do not recommend those because they also collect um, uh, collect dirt and also reduce probably the ground clearance and make the car a little bit bigger but again they look spectacular this one here is the double cap and you see those this raising or rising design line here as we also know it from the l200 mitsubishi and then I like this feature here. It looks really great. Those strong bars right here. Also probably rather a design element. The double cap has then a shorter loading area in the rear. So 115 meters. You can also get um, um, the extra cap, which is like till here. Then you have less space in the interior on the uh, rear bench. But then you got 185 in meters on the loading area and there's also then just a carriage available that you have just the front cabin and even more loading area in the rear. And now to the rear and this classic pickup style, just an angular shape to give maximum cargo space. You can also really see the rear view camera. Towing equipment right here also is power. 3.1 ton is the maximum setup if you have strongest engine. So um, 
can put quite a lot behind that car here. You can also step here, um, on here to get things out, for example, and here is the normal hatch. You can also put some weight on there, it's no problem. And then at the moment it's here the, the, the metal cover for, for the loading area. Really nicely painted also, in total match to the exterior. And then you can also find some different fixation points for the tension belts, for example. This is the car key and you can also have the keyless entry right here and you see that the side mirrors here in this top version also flip in and out automatically. Pretty loud, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> there are two trims, SX and LX. SX is the basic trim we would also recommend because you get a good price. The LX trim, well everything is rather solid here, not too high quality but and we cannot also expect so much of the price. I mean, this is also not an expensive pickup. Then this one is the LX. Um, so the standard version would come with the AC automatically, for example, then the fabric seats. The LX, then you're forced to have animal skin seats and then you also get the um, bigger infotainment system and the rear view camera. In general, of course, uh, car sits relatively high and you see already that from the seat form, you have a lot of space. And yeah, again, this is basically all pretty similar to an L200 cockpit. You just see here so there's a Fiat steering wheel then. And the start-stop is here on the left side and you can also electrically adjust the side mirrors. And let's get inside and well, you could use those side steps then here. Um, but if you're tall enough, you don't have to. Here, an extensive foot tap, but you also got those rubber floor mats you can easily just you know, clean underwater. That's important here for an off-road vehicle. Then again, of course, high seating position, headroom wise. I'm one which is 86 or 6 with 1. There's enough half headroom left. Handle here, also a panic handle <laughs> here on, on the left side. And well, here at the moment we Lean a little bit backward in our position, but you can also adjust the seat, put higher in the rear or in the front and overall, I mean, it's a comfortable seating position. Steering wheel can also be adjusted in all four ways. Not all of the pickups do have that. It's good that we have the possibility right there. Instruments, pretty simple, but very good to see everything in the middle part. You have something for consumption and uh, fuels that is digital. And this part here, the upper part, the upper part is the most important one. There you can see if you had two wheel drive, all wheel drive activate, or if the center differential lock, or also then um, if you got the, the off road gear reduction active. Cockpit overview. I mean, everything's hard plastic, not too much to expect. Temperature can be controlled right here, also with the Wences, pretty easy solution. Um, this is the biggest screen that is available infotainment-wise in the LX trim that comes automatically. And here you see uh, some see, round shapes, which a little bit display the things we see on the outside. Everything in kept pretty much basic. Uh, seat heating is available here in the lower, then also the um, a rear differential lock can be activated here. There's a USB supply and a 12 volt power supply. Some more storage space below that and also a standard glove box right there. The armrest yeah, wobbles around. Then some split and then a lot of space below there. And two beverage holders but they are not really adaptive. Off-road gear selector, pretty interesting. Here, just rear-wheel drive, and then four-wheel drive. You can use this one also driving on-road. I can um, also explain that 
while we drive the car is different than some other pickups then this one here hlc this one would be the next mode and where the center differential is locked that's indeed just for off-road then if you push it and turn it further then this one also would be the off-road gear reduction you have to stand still then and also put in neutral that this one works if you really have super heavy off-road situations so um, pretty easy to pick and i think a good handy solution if you're really changing your terrain and here we go with the infotainment screen um, see you can scroll in it a little bit but not really zoom like in the smartphone you use this outer knob to zoom in and out for that the software is pretty much outdated um, c is not really a good overview it's supplying but you get the gps you can connect your phone via bluetooth also you know that's basically it and serves the basic functions and you will get along with it then what about the rear compartment this here as i said earlier the double cap this one offers more room in the rear and you see knee room wise i could exactly sit here head room wise it's also well yeah exactly fitting for me but as soon as you're let's say 190 or 602 then you have to get problems uh, and well it's not the most comfortable situation right here it's okay i mean for four adults uh it will basically work also two isofix um, on outside seats each so you can mount child seats also with top tethers that's possible armrest here with beverage holders and then you can also flip the bench um, like this i can also get out to show you that completely and the reason for that is um, maybe if you want to uh, put a toolbox um, which is then protected against the rain so you can flip it like this and then um, you can uh, put the front if you put the front seat a little bit more forward um, or if you remove the head restraints then you can fold it all flat and then it's easier to put something behind there um, maybe or just on it that it doesn't damage the seats so what do we have here 2.4 liter diesel 150 or 180 horsepower either with a five-speed manual or uh, sorry five-speed automatic or six-speed manual as we have here right now the entry version is also just available with rear wheel drive all other setups are with all-wheel drive as this one here also Starting here with a little soft off-road and always a lot of fun and I went into the four-wheel drive mode. Yeah, I know there are a lot of guys out there who are the best off-road riders in the world because no matter if we even got some very spectacular off-road scenes and stuff, everyone is always saying, it's not off-road. Off-road is just when, you know, when with one wheel on the ground and flying five meters with the car through the air, well, whatever. I think off-road is when you're off the road. Again, to stress, this is soft off-road, but already a lot of fun. And this vehicle is, of course, also off-road capable. Not put your thumbs in the steering wheel here, because, see, the ground can change the, wheel, the steering wheel around a lot, and then you don't want to dislocate your thumbs. So keep tight to the steering wheel and trust this off-road suspension and those all-terrain tires that do a good job here has been slippery lately but the vehicle is managing that very well here i mean even though it's slippery we do not need the off-road gear reduction yet um we could of course have it here but it's not needed right now here but then again it's good to have to know to have it just in case you have some even heavier off-road situations. Wow, a lot of mud here and some water. That is always a lot of fun. Now we're going uphill. And by the way, good function is also um, very, very usable on road driving. If you stop just, um, oh, that's getting tricky here now. If you just stop mid-hill, then let's go to the, oh, that one was a little bit too much for second gear. Let's go to the first gear, then you see 
no problem. That's a good test, by the way. Good, to, no problem for the car to get out in uphill. And interesting is really, um, if you're stopping just um, uphill, then you have um, the all, well, you have a manual handbrake, but the automatic handbrake function that you don't roll back. So anti-rolling back function that is really helpful. Off-road and street driving here, climbing up the hill, you know. Also very good job from the car. So you can really trust that car off-road. Now in first gear it's also safer than you can stall the engine there. So good small off-road test here. Hope you enjoyed it. So welcome to the driving part and we're starting with rear wheel drive and interesting thing is I can just switch it to four wheel drive also while driving it would be possible in this car and one of the main factors here usually has an open center differential you can also see it in the very front there this symbol that means when I'm for example here now driving in the four wheel drive and really turning the wheels or also standing still and turning them to the maximum it's no problem because the front and the rear axle can turn at different speeds. So we had other off-road cars as a Nissan Navara for example. When you go to the off-road mode there or to the four-wheel drive mode you have the center differential locked. Here getting on the Autobahn let's go to third gear and starting from 70 and yeah also here we have our Alpina watches acceleration moment today. and that's 100. So you see this diesel does have some power but it's usually oriented on you know heavy towing you can have a maximum of 3.1 tons for the towing in the rear that's the main purpose. Six speed manual so you can also go to, to the sixth gear and let's see about the RPMs. So here one th uh, 100 kilometers an hour and just 1600 rpm so that is keeping it quite low then you can then also save some fuel if you go to the sixth gear so back to the differential thing this is a really good thing you can basically drive this car in all-wheel drive mode all the time then with the Nissan Navara again if you had the all-wheel drive mode the um, activated and then standing still and turning the steering wheel pretty much then you could even hear or feel how the car the exit were wind working against each other and then you damage the car indeed so it's usually than just for off-road but here the system it's no problem you can drive this car then also all-wheel drive all the time why would you go two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive well sometimes it's being said that it changes the consumption that the two-wheel drive mode is in less consumption but then again the case is also that some parts basically always turn so I'm not really sure if it would really change the consumption here much in all-wheel drive or, or rear-wheel drive mode. Um, I mean, you can you can just pick it. You do feel it also in dry roads when I accelerate here on dry road. I feel the acceleration is really coming from all four wheels. Here while driving, I can also change it back. I think it works uh, to a speed of 100 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to the two-wheel drive mode now again. No, it's not. There it is. <laughs> there we went back. Now we're in the rear wheel drive mode. Um, well, sometimes I do have the feeling that it's, you know, maybe a little bit more fun to drive with rear wheel. Here also with the pickup because you feel you really get this this push from behind. So um, yeah, yeah, do, you do feel that just a little bit, and maybe it's just a sportier feeling, something like that. Of course, if you go with this car in slippery conditions, then you always have the off um, the all-wheel drive drive also on board. It's a pretty easy and good system to be able to change that around. Here in city driving, of course, it's a long car for European comparisons. In the US, this would be a smaller pickup. You know that the usual pickups or so-called trucks are bigger than they are in general. Overview. 
quite a big side mirror. Also the glass windscreen in the rear. So we have a good overview. You know where the car is ending basically. You know, for the rear view, also have the rear view camera. So the overview is really good because of those steep windows. Just you know to the to the rear side transition because you know, remember from the exterior there's this raising design line you know or this rising design line and this is blocking a little bit the view there that's the only thing driving wise yeah it's definitely feeling like a Mitsubishi L200 so it's basically uh, the same car besides some minor differences and brand wise uh, pricing also basically comparable. I think it more depends on where you get the better price than at your dealer. And I mean, I said earlier, the styling here in the Fiat Fullback, I think it's a little bit more pleasing, a little bit more aggressive, especially uh, with those off-road tires that looked really great here in, in, the, in the black color as well. But driving-wise, it's not really a, a big difference. And this 2.4 liter diesel engine here in the higher spec with 180 horsepower. As I said earlier, it's also available with 150 horsepower. This one here, the stronger version, makes sense if you, for example, want to tow something. You will also get along with a little bit less horsepower. And the one acceleration you've just seen here. Let's get in the front of those guys here. <laughs> you see, that it's powerful enough that you can get some, hey, Nissan Navara. Hey, let's race this Nissan Navara. Come on, racing. <laughs> I think this engine, wait a minute, was it stronger? I think it's, well, it's stronger than the diesel engine in the Nissan Navara. In the US, you can also get the petrol, the diesel is stronger here, as far as I remember. And indeed, um, that's a good, um, good point as well. So, um, especially if you drive this car also on the road, this one here is more handy that you can also have the all-wheel drive then uh, on road. And also, in general, driving wise, if you compare a Nissan Navara, I could hardly see in the Nissan Navara because um, it's mainly built for, it seemed to be smaller people and the windscreen was like ending here and I was, when I was sitting really upright, I couldn't see the road almost, it's really strange. And I was hitting my head when I turning, turned down the, the cover here. But here, it's, I mean, it's really fine also for tall people when driving. And again, if you drive the L200 or the Fiat here, that doesn't make too much of a, of a difference. The steering wheel is quite soft. I mean, we don't have too much expectations than for a pickup truck and also you have to have for off-road riding the possibility to, to steer quite finely you know when there's some moving parts in, 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 on the ground and sometimes the steering wheel gets shaken around then it shouldn't be too progressive so that's fine for an off-road vehicle here, we're driving on road, but I can also put my thumbs in the steering wheel, that's allowed then, not an off-road driving. So we're getting to some Autobahn part again, once more here. So even in the 6 gear you can accelerate a little bit, so power-wise it's really, uh, really fine. Sound insulation, I mean, the general building form of this car does not really favor low wind noise, you have to be sure of that. Yeah, and I have to raise my voice. So it's not really a silent car. I mean, for a pickup in this segment, it's um, it's also okay. Um, there again, the um, Volkswagen Amarok leads it. So the Amarok is the most silent pickup um, I've driven so far, if we consider noise, wind insulation. So, and also the um, engine there, the new three liter TDI they put in there. That was also the, the best engine so far we've driven in the pickups. You know, in Europe, we always get the diesels in the pickup. In the US, it's mostly then the big, naturally aspirated petrol engines. And very well, see the cars approaching from the rear also. 
I mean, it's basically a relaxing ride, only that it's a little bit loud. But you have this high seating position, so you can relax also for longer travels, also comfortable then for, for taller drivers, that's fine. Good view to the front, so you feel overall pretty comfortable. I mean, of course, this also has the off-road suspension. That means when I'm turning steering wheel now at higher speeds, you feel the car is tilting. We do expect that from a pickup. You have to be aware of that, that you can drive safely on the road. This is, of course, nothing for racing, so I wouldn't go to the highest speeds and also be careful in the corners and rather enjoy the, the off-road capabilities. Especially with those all-terrain tires we have mounted, they look so spectacular and I guess they have mainly mounted uh, those for visual purposes. Mm, do you feel a big difference? Yeah, maybe a little bit. They are a little bit, you know, wobbly on, on the road than other tires would be. And again, and they have advantages for off-road part. I would probably only go for it when I'm, you know, really riding off-road so um, they don't make too much sense if you mainly use this car for, for road driving or just you know as a, as a lifestyle pickup so but you can pick that accordingly so I usually remain here in the rear wheel drive mode and also um, I found someone nicer to drive I would go with the all-wheel and maybe when it's wet or snowy um, and stuff on the, on the road and just maybe just otherwise leave it for the all-wheel drive although we could theoretical still use it as I told you earlier. So see also start stop function this diesel is equipped with. Um, I'm not really a fan of it as we had this uh, visit to a engine testing plant where they said you know it's built there to save fuel on paper and if you have those periods where the engine is really turned off for a long time by the start-stop function, then you might think, oh, that's really a situation where it makes sense, this function. But exactly in those situations, it's where the engine possibly takes damage on the long-term run because so much pressure inside the system. That's what the engineers, the testing engineers, told us there. So, um, But you can also just turn it off here with a button um, inside and then also see it here in the instruments, probably not sure if you can see it on camera at the moment. Um, but then the, the start-stop function is actually off. So everything else, you can reach temperature stuff here also while driving pretty easily, that's fine. The infotainment system, controlling it while driving is not that easy as the software is outdated as we told you earlier. Um, so focusing that while driving, but the, the volume knob is also easily accessible there. Well, consumption-wise, um, of course, it always depends on how much load do you have, how you are really driving, and you know, terrain up, down, and, and stuff. So that can really vary a lot. The consumption we have here at the moment is at 8.9 liters on one kilometers. I mean, it's a heavy car. It's a towing animal, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you want to say so. Um, so the consumption is, I think, okay for that. It could always be lower, but maybe someone of you has a Mitsubishi L200 or a Fiat Fullback already, maybe owning it for a little longer time as a private or business customer. And we would also be looking forward to your feedback there, as for the consumption especially, and of course other experiences. And as a last remark, well, suspension-wise, as I said, soft off-road suspension that you can use that very well. But if you're running over, oh, Seattle and Cupra facing us, oh, the Cupra R, I think. If you're running over some bumps in the road, you do feel, especially from from the rear axle, because uh, you know this, it's not really equipped, you know, for passenger sense. It's really more equipped that you can also put some heavy load on there. Therefore it's a little bit stiffer, a little bit rougher and then you've you got this bang you know from the from the rear axle especially. See that's there that's what I mean bang. And so that's of course not a very comfortable feeling when riding the car. So always depends on the purpose but I mean it, it still could be could be better why not. 
So consumption goes down just a little bit even more, 8.6 liters now, no, no test rides so far. So you see, if you drive it calmly as I do, and you usually should do that because it's really not fun to drive the car that fast, then you also sure shouldn't be too high in the consumption. Yeah, here another sharp turn you now. Let's see how the car performs right there. It's relatively easy to handle, really. I think that's also a trend that was lately in the pickup segment. The cars are becoming easier and easier to handle, not feeling so much as you're driving a big truck today, more feeling like a passenger car. This car here, for this aspect, surely sits somewhere in between. And now our conclusion, Fiat Fullback. I mean, in general, this car is thoroughly tested because it relays on this L200 platform. Styling, it works for city and for off-road, has something of both. It's not the most aggressive styling, but I think especially here in the black paint, it has some elegance and then with the off-road tires, some off-road style at the same time. And also becoming more and more famous now, for example, due to the sponsoring in the MXGP, the Motocross World Championship with the Fiat Fullback. The interior quality can, of course, be more stepped up. That's the same with the Mitsubishi. It's more, you know, really basic in the interior. As for the functions, also the infotainment system is a little bit outdated. They probably should have put another one in there. Maybe that's possible in a new update or so. Then driving-wise, I mean, it's again a solid or rough pickup and that you do also get riding-wise. But of course, you always have the upright seating position for longer comfortable rides. We would recommend to go just from the entry base version because then you can really play the biggest advantage of this car and this is the price performance deal because there's hardly any other pickup on the market that you can get for this price then. And um, so it's below 30,000 euros net. Of course, the taxes come to this, but as this one officially counts as a commercial vehicle, always the net prices are being stated. And off-road, I mean, there's a very handy off-road gear selector. You can switch it around, have all the different off-road gears, so you're also ready for all terrain situations. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Auto Gefühl. Also, tune in next time and give us your feedback. What do you think about this very car? Thank you very much.